right today we are going to talk about part 2 of the retina as we discussed in the previous lecture the retina is basically a delicate membrane made of cells right and this is present it is sandwiched between the choroid externally and vitreous body internally is that right and as i discussed previously that retina uh, has two basic part right one is the pigment layer this blue one right this is pigment layer retinal pigment epithelial and this green part which i'm showing here this is basically neuro neuronal part of the or neural part of the retina as we discussed in previous lecture that basically retina is embryologically derived from a optic vesicle uh, budding out of diencephalon right uh, let me repeat a little bit that in the central nervous system development here is your telencephalon and here it is diencephalon and here it is mesencephalon and rhombencephalon and eventually neural tube rest of the neural tube now from this diencephalon actually telencephalon should hang outward as we discussed in the previous lecture that from the diencephalon right this uh, optic vesicle come out and eventually it develops a cup cup shaped structure and when it become cupped we call it optic cup is that right and actually optic cup has an inner lining and it has an outer lining this is the outer lining which convert into yes retinal pigment epithelium this is the outer lining and inner lining as it differentiate right it convert into yes neuronal neural layer of retina right so we can say that pigment epithelium of the retina is derived from outer part of the optic cup and neural layer of the retina is derived from the inner layer of the optic cup because they are having different embryological origin they are not having any junctional complexes in between the two layers there are no junctional complexes between the two layer due to that reason these two layers are not very sticky right these two layers are not very sticky they are not held together tightly right and actually to be more accurate this pigment epithelium retinal pigment epithelium is more tightly held with the choroid it more sticky or more strongly attached with choroid and poorly attached with neural part of retina it has a clinical significance because due to trauma or due to some pathology if there is damage here there may be retinal detachment but when we say there is retinal detachment it does not mean that pigment it does not mean that pigment and neural neuronal both layer detached actually as their embryological origin is different right so neural layer and pigment layer they are as i told you are not strongly attached with each other during retinal detachment this is a neuronal layer which falls away from the falls inward from the pigment layer so when there is clinically when there is retinal detachment actually we should not call it truly retinal detachment we just suspect the senior doctors who put the tame name it is it should be said retinal dissection it dissection within the retinal layer is that right retinal detachment is actually retinal dissection in which tissue, there is a space created maybe there is edematous fluid or hemorrhage or whatever due to some pathology so in retinal detachment basically neural layer of the retina detaches from retinal pigment epithelium is that right so retinal pigment epithelium remain strongly attached in place and in position with the choroid is that right why simply because the pigment epithelium is derived from the outer part of the optic cup and neural layer of the retina is derived from the inner cup right and they are not having any strong junctional complexes to hold them together am i clear okay now we come to 
माइक्रो स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द रेटिना स्पेशली न्यूरल रेटिना राइट एज यू नो नाउ दैट न्यूरल रेटिना इज प्लास्टर्ड ऑन द रेटिनल पिगमेंट एपिथिलियम न्यूरल रेटिना इज प्लास्टर्ड ऑन द इट इज प्रेस्ड ऑन द वट इज दिस रेटिनल पिगमेंट एपिथिलियम बट इट इज इट इज मेड ऑफ मेनी सेल्स एंड इज अ स्पेशल अरेन्जमेंट ऑफ दो सेल्स राइट लेट्स टॉक अबाउट दैट वॉट आर द सेल्स different kind of cells which are there and how they are arranged right and how many layers they make the cells which are there there are number 1 there are epithelial cells cells there are receptor cells photoreceptor cells cells there are neuronal cells some authorities include the photoreceptor cells as neuronal cells and of course there is supportive cells right glial cells as i told you previously that retina is basically protrusion from the central nervous system retina is the only part of your central nervous system where you can look directly is that right Uh, through the ophthalmoscope, of course. Uh, don't try to look in the eyes of your girlfriend without a ophthalmoscope if you're looking for retina. Otherwise, you will find some other things there. So, epithelial cells, photoreceptor cells, neuronal cells, and glial cells. Glial cells. cells. Right? These are four kind of cells uh, which are arranged to make the retina. Right? And now I'm going to draw that how these cells are arranged. for drawing purpose i will take a part of our retina from here right i remove a piece of this structure from here and enlarge it here i'm going to take the structure and put it over here and then we will look at its micro detail of how these uh, cells are arranged there first of all of course outermost will be sclera right i will just put sclera so that you don't get confused okay here is your sclera right inner to sclera there is what is this choroid here i would love to mention that these are the arteries this is ophthalmic artery suppose right and from the ophthalmic artery many branches come a uh, one group of branches is what is this which enters and penetrate here yes what is that posterior ciliary artery right so i will show it here that here is your choroid right and in the choroid this posterior ciliary artery is going right and of course it gradually becomes into divides into smaller branches and those smaller branches give rise to yes what are these vascular loops which eventually convert into sinusoids they convert into sinusoids and these sinusoids yes there are two things in that these are the cells with gaps right these are the big large size micro vessels or large size capillaries and they have not only fenestrated endothelium that endothelial cells are having holes even in there are interendothelial gaps also these are there to provide nutrition and other exchanges to the retina then so i will just enlarge what are these these are your sinusoidal vessels present in choroid right now we call it choreo capillaries what we call them choreo capillaries right now over that of course there is a very fine membrane here we call it membrane of branch but over that here is your yes this blue line what is this retinal pigmented epithelium right retinal pigment epithelium right now this pigment epithelial cells they are having 
you can say projections like this cilia and I will tell you what is the purpose of these cilias they are like they are opening their mouth right these are pigment epithelial cells of course these are uh, dark colored and they absorb the extra light for that purpose they are having special type of pigment granules inside what are those granules called melano somes melano somes these are the granules full of melanin right they will absorb the extra light so that there is no internal reflections in the eye and optical image does not degrade its quality is maintained right any question up to here now here I would love to mention another thing that these cells they are held together by tight junctions what are these tight, tight junctions these are the tight junctions now listen from these capillaries nutrients will pass through these cells nutrients will pass oxygen or glucose or amino acids or other components which are required by the outer part of the retina remember here is the outer part of retina there is the inner part of retina so this part of retina will be outer and this part of retina will be inner many times students confuse it outer retina is that part of the retina which is towards the choroid and inner retina is that part of the retina which is towards the vitreous so actually what happens these capillary loops or sinusoids right blood flow here is very fast they give nutrients and remove metaboli metabol metabolites from outer retina so they are providing the nourishment to the outer retina especially rods and cones which are photoreceptors rod and cones are very wonderful cells they can convert one type of energy into another type of energy they convert electro electromagnetic waves of light electromagnetic waves of light into electrochemical changes and produce neural activity right or we can say these are so wonderful cell which have a capacity to convert the optical image to convert the optical image into neuronal activity neuronal impulses so rod and cone cells they are present here these rod and cone cells right they are the photoreceptors right receptor mean in the body when we talk there is a sensory receptor the sensory receptor is any structure which can convert one type of stimulus energy into electrochemical changes as graded potentials now here are rods and cones rods are rod shape and cones are cone shapes that's so simple so let me make a typical rod this is tip of the rod and rod has outer segment there are lot of disc into it right in these discs there is what is there pigment visual pigment in the rods the visual pigment is called rhodopsin what is it called rhodopsin now rhodopsin is present over there this is called what is this outer segment then this part is called inner segment and after that here there is the nucleus and here is synaptic spherule synaptic terminal of the rod this is basic structure of the rod that rod has a nucleus and to the inner side of the retina it is having synaptic terminal and on outer side of the retina towards the pigment cell it has outer segment this is outer segment and this is inner segment outer segment is a photoreceptive component outer receptor is the photo receptive component to receive the light stimuli and produces chemical changes into it electrochemical changes which we will discuss later another lecture the how the visual pigment or rhodopsin undergoes changes and eventually electrical changes are there now here is the rod and let me draw one cone cone is cone shape rod is rod shape and cone is cone shape this is also having outer segment but here cone is having membrane folded right this is 
outer segment of cone this is outer segment of rod this is inner segment of cone it is inner segment of rod and there is a nucleus of rod and there is a nucleus of cone and here is the synaptic terminal here it is called spherule and here it is called pedicle right or if you cannot remember spherule from the rod then pedicle from the cone you just say the synaptic terminals right now rod and cones both are present in the retina and their photosensitive part are facing towards the pigmented. retinal pigment epithelium and pigment epithelium and cilia on the sides in which they are embedded is that right so now i will make few raw simply simple diagrams of rod what is this outer segment what is this inner, inner segment nucleus. and what is this yes. nucleus and spherule right this is spherule again i will make another rod here yes rod outer segment inner segment nucleus synaptic then outer segment inner segment yes and spherules is that right and here i can make another cone right and in this cone again there is inner segment and this is pedicle right so this is the basic stru structure of rod and cones which are applied against the pigment epithelium of the retina right i will go in detail later the differences in rod and cones i'm just first making a general structure if you want to remember general structure how the cells are arranged how the cells are arranged in the neuronal retina you can remember rbg r b g rbg stands for receptors and then there will be bipolar cells and then there will be ganglion cells rbg right even though rbg stand for red blue and green as well which are different types of cones right after this arrangement the next thing which is there is bipolar cells right for b bipolar cells of course have two poles bipolar cells have two poles they are neurons basically and i will make bipolar cells like this this is their nucleus one pole is going to the outer side right these are bipolar and other is going to the inner side of the retina right these are what yes bipolar cells right now another thing which i would love to mention that different uh, rods multiple rods can be connected to one bipolar cell right but cones especially in the fovea centralis cone are connected one cone to one bipolar cell right so these are the bipolar cell and if i make it here one more rod so you can see that there are multiple rods yes there are multiple rods which are connected with one bipolar cell, cell. right it has some important functional concept that uh, the multiple rods connected with one bipolar cell in the fovea centralis cones are there and one cone connect with one bipolar and in the periphery there are some cones which are connected few cones with one bipolar but anyway now from the bipolar cell you have done the receptors photoreceptors you have done the bipolar now the next type of cells which are ganglion cells right now ganglion cells i will again make them okay ganglion cells are these are the ganglion cells right so bipolar cells where they are connected with the what is this this process of the bipolar cell which is connected with the rod and cones it behaves like a dendrite and in bipolar cell that process which is connected with the ganglion cell that behaves like a axons now here are the ganglion cells actually when light falls on rod and cone and rod and cones are activated they produce gradient what is this they produce graded potential local potentials right they modify the activity in bipolar cells bipolar cells also generate graded potentials they also generate 
graded potential but when bipolar cell influence the ganglion cells ganglion cells have voltage gated sodium channels so ganglion cells are having the capacity to produce action potential so it's very important concept that when rbg arrangement that receptors photoreceptors and what is the second cell bipolar cell both of these two cells basically produce graded potentials and then ganglion cells when they are influenced by these graded potentials they actually produce action potentials from the action potentials which are produced by the ganglion cells ganglion cells are central processes these central processes are very long and they go towards the optic disc and then through the optic disc they go out to the central nervous, nervous system so the main output main output neurons of the retina are ganglion cells am i clear so this is rbg receptors bipolar cells and ganglion cells now this flow of the current is from or flow of the impulses is or flow of the signal is from outer retina to the inner retina so we say there is radial flow the current flow is this flow of the current is radial flow what i mean by radial that it is moving from inner side because now if i draw the inner side what should be here this be rod rod and cones what should be here bipolar cell and what should be here and these are the ganglion cell process which is going to the central nervous system is that right let me repeat it here yes you will tell me what is the cell here rod and cone photoreceptor after that what cell is there bipolar, bipolar. and what is the cell here and this is going to the central nervous system so you understand optic nerve is basically made of the axons of ganglion cells optic nerve is basically made of so here is your optic nerve right so this is made of the axons which are derived from the ganglion cells is that right so this is basic rbg arrangement now here is a very important thing to understand let's suppose light is falling here right light has to not only pass through cornea and anterior chamber aqueous humor and through the pupil and then lens and through the vitreous it has to pass through the inner layers of the retina to reach up to the photo receptors because photo receptors are plastered against the pigment epithelium so light has to pass through these layers it means this part of the retina is transparent it's relatively transparent am i clear any question up to this so these were the three cells right some people call these cells receptors and other cells as neuronal cells and current here is moving radially from inside to from outside to inside right current is moving from outside to inside in this way and we say this radial travel of the impulses in which rod and cones are giving graded and bipolar are giving graded and now i'm drawing the cell you tell me what is this cell rod, rod and cone ganglion yes ganglion yes say loudly bipolar ganglion r b g r b g yes r b g right so this is the basic arrangement is it difficult to understand so easy isn't it now but the thing is that actually not only these photoreceptors are influencing the bipolar cell right photoreceptors talk to each other also they talk to each other also right so it means there should be some cell which should be basically interconnecting them hi they are saying hi locally what are they saying hi they are saying hi cells of course it's not written in the book like that but just remember there are some local cells which are conducting cell local conducting cell through which the current moves they say hi here and there within the retina is that right yes sir i'm not talking about sporting cells 
I'm talking about local conducting cells which are not uh, giving current radially, they are moving the current maybe in unusual direction, for example, laterally. For example, here is a cell and it is connected here and also connected here. These are horizontally placed cells, very good. So what are these cells? Horizontally placed cell. They can interconnect. Is that right? So what are these cells? Horizontal cells. So these stand for H. Hi. Then there should be A cell. Right? Actually, this layer where the connections are being made. Now here is the point where connection synapses between photoreceptors and bipolar cell and horizontal cells. Is that right? This whole area where these network of connections is made, this is called plexiform layer. Plexiform network layer. Now, here is also plexiform is making. Plexiform means network or synapses. Right? This is outer and this is inner. Now, here also there are cells which help in the cross talk. Right? And these cells are amacrine cells. Most of them are amacrine cells. Right? Amacrine cells. Right? But some of these amacrine cells are displaced more distally. They may be present over here. Now what we see here that there is a network of synaptic terminals which is outward and there is another network of synaptic terminals which is inward, right? This is outer plexiform layer, outer plexiform layer and it is inner because it is inside the it is on the vitre vitreal side of the red uh, eye and this is on the choroidal side of the eye so this is inner yes, yes plexiform, plexiform layer. layer right now if someone asks in outer plexiform layer who is talking photoreceptors with bipolar cell and horizontal cells cross talking right and in outer inner plexiform layer which cells are talking mainly bipolar cell with ganglion cells and cross talk by amacrine cells and cross talk by the amacrine cells is that clear <coughs> now if this is clear, these are high cell, there is one I also. This is outer plexiform, this is inner plexiform. Now, some cells are connecting the, yes, outer plexiform with the inner plexiform. Some cells are connecting outer plexiform with the inner plexiform. It means both network also talk to each other. These are called Thank God, very easy name. Because they are connecting the two plexiform layers, we call them interplexiform cells. We call them interplexiform inter cells. This is something that's very important to understand here. Okay, I will make it uh, interplexiform cells a little more. This is interplexiform cells. Here, this is the interplexiform cells, and this is the interplexiform cell. What are these cells? Horizontal, Horizontal cells right and horizontal cell and what are these amacrine cells right so these were the interconnections now let's go back rbg rbg take the information radially from into sorry from outside to inside clear rbg take information from photoreceptors to the nerve layer, neuronal layer of the ganglion. Horizontal cell and amacrine cells, they take information laterally. 
an interplexiform cell take information in reverse direction let me tell you as rod and cone information is going in this direction bipolar cell information is going in this direction ganglion cell is going into that direction right but interplexiform are having reverse direction of current actually interplexiform cells they are giving the secret information from the outer plexiform layer to, to the inner plexiform layer so we call it sentry it is reverse direction of current now let's talk about their neurotransmitters also here yes rod and cones they use glutamate as neurotransmitters glutamic acid or glutamate right and this is an excitatory neurotransmitter so when so transmitter neurotransmitter of the rods and cones of course rods ferrule and cone particles they release their glutaminergic they are glutaminergic bipolar cells are anyone one thing i told you these are glutaminergic now you tell me one thing bipolar cell when they are activated what they are releasing there they are also releasing glutaminergic right so now let me tell you that neurotransmitter by the photoreceptor is what is that glutamine glutamic acid glutaminergic and neurotransmitter from bipolar is also glutaminergic is that right and then ganglion cells they go and eventually they go to central nervous system and there they release from their synaptic terminals they release neurotransmitter right ganglion cells release which neurotransmitter who will who is going to tell me i just told you glutamate, glutamate. all of them are glutaminergic rbg all of the rbg is are glutaminergic rbg remember this g gluta and the glutamate right any question you are clear about it so this is current which is moving from the outer retina towards the inner retina retina through the photoreceptor and bipolar, bipolar cell then ganglion cell it is glutaminergic glutamate dependent network or information any question up to here no question and now these cells mostly these uh, horizontal cells and amacrine cells are inhibitory right especially horizontal cells are inhibitory so they must have inhibitory neurotransmitter these cell what is this cell horizontal cell it is basically gabergic gaba gamma mino butyric acid it is gabergic cell when it is giving signal it releases gamma mino butyric acid and amacrine cells amacrine cells are gabergic okay i will explain it they are they are gabergic they are also glycinergic some of them because amacrine cells are many variety of the cells so some of them release glycine glycine so glycinergic some of them re release acetylcholine cholinergic some of the amacrine cells even release dopamine dopa menergic right if you cannot remember all of them no problem at least remember the most important pathway going on there that is from rbg pathway rod and cones bipolar and ganglion all of them release glutamate glutamate as a neurotransmitter but rod and cones produce graded potentials bipolar cell also produce graded potential in the retina action potential is produced by in the ganglion action potential is produced in the ganglion. ganglion cells why action potential is produced here because they have to have an action to go very long travel towards the central nervous system maybe am i clear any question up to this so we have rbg cells and we are having which cells other high cells which say locally high the cells which are saying high in the outer plexiform layer horizontal in the inner plexiform layer amacrine and in between the two plexiform right so again i will come back the cells which are in the retina there are receptors photoreceptors bipolar then ganglion cells 
Is that right? Any question here? And we can make it like this. Here the current is going in that direction. Is that right? So this is, and what is the, this current going? Which cells? Horizontal. Horizontal. And what are these cells here? Yes. And what is this cell? Interflexes. Am I clear? Right. Now, of course, these are very delicate cells and these are very delicate in a way wires and synapses. They should be held at their positions. They should not get tangled. They should be well supported. Am I right or wrong? You cannot put a lot of bulbs and a lot of wires. They put just jumble them and they will short circuit. So we don't want any sort of electrochemical short circuiting within the retina. They are, they are going to make very fine diagrams, detailed diagrams, particularly in the daylight. You can determine the beauty of, you understand? So if there is short circuiting, maybe a woman will look like a pineapple or something like that. That is not good. So it means these cells should be fixed at their places. They should be fixated at their places. And all these synapses should be having some mechanism of insulation. The cells which keep these neuronal tissue in the retina at their appropriate place. And the cells which insulate different components. Those cells are actually glial cells. We call them sporting cells. They are behaving like, these are like babies and they are behaving like a mom. They are keeping the babies at proper places so they don't fight. Is that right? So we can say as there was RBG for the radial flow and then there was what? High cells which were basically interconnections and now we should have, yes, mom cells, man, man cells. Of course in the books it's not written like that. I'm just mentioning how to remember. First M, the most important M stands for Muller cells. Muller cells. Muller cells are very interesting cells. They make one of the major bulk of retina. They are type of a glial cells. Uh, their nuclei are present here. This is the Muller cell nucleus. Right? And this cell has one extension, right, which is going to the periphery, to the outer part, and this divides into different type of cilia and hold the inner inner segment or outer segment outer. right so Muller cells are coming again the Muller cell is here and it is coming like that and again it will have connection here and also connection here in the same way Muller cell will come and it will get connected here and here. Muller cell will come and have connections here. Now what they are making, okay, I will make just uh, hypothetically multiple Muller cells and they are they have one process which is going periphery. What they are doing here? They are actually, they, these processes are fixating the rod and cone at their place. They are holding the rod and cones at their place. You can imagine that rod and cones are like bulb and their sockets are fit into Muller cell these processes. Is that right? So these processes are making a lamina here. They are making a lamina here or they are making a membrane here in which inner part of the rod and cones are fixated. Is that right? Secondly, another advantage of this lamina is the micro environment of rod and cone. The matrix, matrix or fluid between the photoreceptors, it has a very special private micro environment here. This is called interphotoreceptor extracellular matrix. These Muller cells processes which make a membrane 
it does not allow this material to escape to rest of the retina am i clear yes so they may number one they hold the rod and cones at their place yes this lamina which is made of the processes of muller cell to be very true muller cells are very tightly connected here through zona adherence so these zona adherence can be seen under the light microscope and they, it looks like a membrane it's not a true membrane it looks like a membrane looks like a lamina basically now they are, they are number one holding the rod and cone into place number two they are keeping the privacy of interphotoreceptor fluid and matrix so that it is not escaping into rest of the retina more internally am i clear then these cells also give processes which go more inner this is the processes which go inward and they go up to the vitreous they go up to the vitreous and here they make foot places they make foot processes muller cells foot plates and these foot plates another muller cell i put here these foot plates also make one more lamina here they are putting a boundary between the retina and the vitreous you are understanding so basically they are muller cells are providing the framework in which retinal components are positioned properly is that right and this is also like a membrane this is also like a membrane or lamina of course this must be inner lamina this must be inner lamina and it is limiting the flow of the components in appropriately we call it inner limiting lamina what we call it inner limiting membrane or lamina whatever you call but actually it is not a lamina not a membrane right but still we call it inner this inner limiting lamina or membrane it's up to your sweet will whatever you want to call it okay then what about this this is also a oh my god this is not inner this is outer why you didn't correct me you are also sleeping okay this is outer this is outer lamina and this is inward so what is this inner limiting lamina so there is outer limiting lamina which is also made by the muller cell and their processes and there is inner limiting lamina which is also made of the muller cell and their foot plates and of course from the vitreous side inner limiting lamina will be here you understand it and outer limiting lamina will be here now inner limiting lamina even though it is made of the foot particles or foot processes or foot plates of what is this muller cells but also vitreous you know vitreous body is here this also contributes some collagen and proteoglycan to this layer right in this way there is a boundary between the retina and the and the uterus vitreous okay i was surprised you are having very weird type of anatomy so uh between the yes inner limiting membrane is basically acting as a boundary but which is in the most boundary of retina and so keeping the retina privately from the vitreous body am i clear and also this lamina does not allow the retinal cell to slip into vitreous body am i clear and of course does not allow the vitreous material to impinge inside the retina am i clear any question up to this now let me draw it rapidly and you will tell me what i'm drawing and we'll try to make diagram now more clear is that right okay and when uh, our senior ophthalmologist many years back many decades back when they were looking on the retina under the light microscope 
they were able to differentiate 10 layers in the retina now we'll talk about what they were looking at right these cells and their connections and laminas were making about 10 layers right let's see what are those 10 layers we start from here what are these cells now I'll make it fast yes rapidly retinal pigment epithelium derived from which layer of the optic vesicle outer and tightly attached with choroid and loosely attached with the neural layer of retina very good and what are these I will just make very simple what are these things rods and cones and in the retina rods are more the hundred million rods and about five to seven million cones right these are rods and cones clear of course rod and cones are having processes here these are their nuclei and these are their processes nuclei and which processes synaptic terminal synaptic terminal rod synaptic terminal is spherule and cone synaptic terminal is yes pedicle good so these are rods and cones what should be the first apply the RBG what should be the next cell bipolar, bipolar cells what color we used in previous diagram blue so these are the bipolar cells right and now uh, it is quite possible one bipolar cell is connected with multiple photoreceptors this is an example where bipolar cells are connecting with rods and in cones case so these are the rods but if there is a cone let me make a cone right and in cone usually it is specially in fovea centralis this is one on one arrangement there is a private line going here is a public line right and again we can, we can make it yes and again I hope you understand this arrangement right and again here what was this this is also cone. cone any question up to this now after this what is the other group of cells ganglion cells right ganglion cells ganglion cells are able to produce action potentials and from the ganglion cells these nerve fibers which are going towards the central nervous system and if you look at the retina they are making a nerve fiber layer nerve fiber layer is it clear I think uh, we made ganglion cells previously which color green why do you don't remind me you are too sleepy and I'm lost too maybe okay so ganglion cells these are the ganglion cells and these are their nerve fiber layer is it clear yes. any question up to this and current is moving radially from outer side of the retina to the inner side and glutaminergic glutamate glutamate am I clear someone has to ask me where these fibers in central nervous system go when I'm about to finish the lecture okay then I will tell you exactly where they go now after that these are RBG cells what are the other cells local cells high cells high high how the high high will be there yes horizontal cells right horizontal cells clear and then there is amacrine cells there are amacrine cells is that clear and then there is interplexiform cells I will just make it like this these are interplexiform cells right now you tell me what are the next cells man cells, glial cells, sporting cells first of all Muller cell 
Muller cells have their cell body here also, right? Uh, but their one process is going centrally, yes, and it is making attachment here and here. In the same way, more Muller cell come, right? And they will make attachments here. You are understanding? So this is a Muller cells process is coming to the outer part and they are interconnecting. Any question up to this? These are Muller cells, uh, outer processes. Then there are inner processes going on and they are making arrangement here. Is that right? Now, classically, when our senior ophthalmologists they were looking at this structure under the light microscope they were able to differentiate it into 10 layers let's go for those 10 layers right first of all we come to this layer yes what should be this layer pigment retinal pigment epithelial layer right then there is a second layer here these are layer of rod and cone second is layer of rods and cones truly speaking this is a layer of photoreceptor receiving component of the rod and cone it's not complete rod and cone it's only outer and the inner segment of the rod and cone this area does not include the nuclei of the rod and cone it does not include the terminal uh, synaptic terminals of the rod and cone right but rod and cone this area this lamina come you remember that this lamina yes what is this outer limiting membrane outer limiting membrane how many layers are done now three layer then these nuclei are there these are the nuclei of bipolar cell mostly but uh, of, sorry 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 these are the nuclei of rod and cones and some and these layer of rod and cone nuclei it, right this is called outer nuclear layer nuclei which are in a big layer and this is in the outer retina so we call it outer, outer nuclear, nuclear, nuclear layer any question up to this right what is this layer tell me rapidly no first of first layer is pigment epithelium second is layer of photoreceptor component of the rod and cone then outer limiting membrane and then there is outer nuclear layer and here is a lot of talk going on it's a social place and uh, what is this place outer plexiform layer layer now these five layers outer five layers they are actually other group and inner five layers in another way or another group why because outer five layers are supplied by the diffusion of the components through choreocapillaries these outer five layers do not have capillaries inside come here this is the retina right let's suppose retina from here pigment layer up to here this is the outer layer and here it is inner layer this outer layer does not have any capillary inside so it is receiving blood supply from it is receiving the nutrients and other substances through the choreo capillaries right but the whatever blood components are coming here these endothelial cells these endothelial cells I told you that these endothelial cells are having special tight junctions these tight junctions act as a barrier these tight junctions act as a barrier between the choreo capillaries and outer retina you are understanding so this is called blood retinal barrier services provided by pigment epithelium of retina so pigment epithelium of retina has many functions it has many functions one function is that this layer actually act as a blood retinal barrier whatever is in the 
what is this core head capillary it will check what should move and what shouldn't move across is that right and outer five layers up to here it is receiving its metabolic needs from the core core capillaries through the what pigment epithelium by diffusion process is that clear then we come to other layers you already know rod and cone layer then there is sorry pigment layer rod and cone layer third is outer membrane or external limiting membrane then there is outer nuclear layer which are the nuclei of rod and cone then there is outer plexiform layer an outer plexiform layer and then you go more internally if you move in more internally you see many nuclei uh, which are present here what are these cells nuclei yes bipolar cell nuclei this nuclear layer is not outer this was the outer layer of nuclei this is inner layer of nuclei and bipolar cell nuclei are abundant but actually within the same area muller cell nuclei are also there horizontal cell nuclei are also there and amacrine cell nuclei are also there so all this layer of the nuclei right in which mainly uh, they are most abundantly what is there bipolar cell nuclei but also there are horizontal cell nuclei amacrine cell nuclei and muller cell nuclei this group of nuclei or layer of nuclei is called inner inner nuclear layer am i clear any question up to this so this is your inner nuclear layer after that another network come and what is this network it is another plexiform layer what is this okay this was sixth layer and here it is seventh layer what is this inner plexiform layer right inner plexiform layer and after that here are another group of nuclei of which cells ganglion cells because we cannot call it now outer or inner nuclear layer thank god we simply call it ganglion cell layer what do you call it ganglion. ganglion cell layer and in the ganglion cell layer there are some displaced amacrine cells also amacrine cells are usually on this side but some of them may be displaced there but predominantly if you remember nuclei outer nuclear layer is by the nuclei of mainly photo rod and cones inner nuclear layer is mainly bipolar cell along with some nuclei of horizontal cell and muller cell and amacrine cell and ganglion cell layer is of course ganglion cell nuclei with some displaced amacrine cells any question up to this so ganglion cell layer is how much uh, which is the layer eighth layer ganglion cell layer. cell layer and then what is this layer what is this layer nerve fibers when light come it has to pass through this layer this is the nerve fiber layer ninth nerve fiber layer these fibers are derived from where ganglion cells central processes mainly am i clear and then in the end these were the foot plates of muller cell most internally with some components like collagen and proteoglycans provided by uterus vitreous yes vitreous i don't know what happened to you it is vitreous okay so this is called what inner inner limiting membrane or lamina so this is basically uh, most of the book when they mention that there are 10 layers in the retina this is how these are derived any question up to this there is no question now you know very well what are the cells of the retina and what are the layers of the retina right i just want to check how much you understood rapidly tell me what is this is what layer pigment epithelium this is uh, what layer yes rod and cones what is this layer from muller cell outer limiting and what are these nuclei these are nuclei of 
yes rod and cones and then yes after that there is a layer here and what is this layer outer plexiform and what are these cells bipolar cells and in bipolar cells now you tell me other layer first was pigment second was rod and cone third was outer limiting fourth is outer nuclear fifth is outer plexiform sixth is inner plexiform with some nuclei of horizontal cells and some nuclei of amacrine cells and some nuclei of muller cell or interplexiform cells and then what sixth seventh layer here was which cells inner plexiform inner plexiform so this is seventh layer inner plexiform layer and what is this eighth layer ganglion cell and what is this ninth layer nerve fiber layer and what is this tenth oh sorry ten layer is it clear any question up to this no question let's have a break then